In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of completing the week 12 assignment for Web Design 2. Um, this is where the assignment instructions are, responsive web design. This is also where you would turn it in. There's a couple of files that we'll be using later. However, uh, I want you to pay attention mostly to the instructions, these 14 steps and sub-steps uh, within. It may seem like a lot, but it's really not that difficult. This class is actually self-contained, or rather this lesson is self-contained in a uh, web page of the W3 schools. And I click here to follow it. This is a responsive web design introduction page. Uh, I ask you to read and review. There's not that much to read. And if you want to follow along and, and copy and paste the code that's there, that's great. I'll tell you, though, specifically which code it is that you need for this particular assignment. First, we need to create a new folder in your website. So I'm going to open up my, um, my Windows Navigator and see I've already I'm already in my sites, my folder. I'm going to create, first of all, I can either right click and select new, which you can't see. I could have also clicked on the new folder. Create a new folder and call it week 12. No spaces. Inside here, it's where the uh, index.html and styles.css will reside. I'll come back to that when I need it. I'm going to open up the Notepad++ uh, text editor. If you use Sublime or another one, if you're on a Mac, whatever it is that you use that works best for you is fine. I'm going to click on File and tell it to open up a folder as a workspace. I'm going to look for the folder that I just created. Well, actually, the parent of that folder. I have it in my libraries. Uh, my particular folder is inside my Amazon Drive, inside Sites. F. Rodriguez is my um, website. And the workspace panel that I want is actually this one, F. Rodriguez. That way, if I need something from these other places, uh, it'll be available to me. I'll click OK. And uh, now I see my, uh, my site and the folders within it. I'm going to, well, first of all, I already have a new file created. That's the way Notepad++ operates. I need to create the index.html and the styles.css. Um, I can see create an index.html file and attach it to the CSS. So index.html, if you click on that, it'll take you to a sample HTML page. So you don't need to start typing from scratch. I'm just going to copy this text, select that and copy it, and place it onto this new file that I created. I will probably be using some of this code, but not really. I know that my page title, since we're redoing the template, is going to be called Dallas Office Supply. I'll type that. And I'll get rid of the H1 and the paragraph for now. I'm going to separate that head here so that the body is on its own. Maybe even the HTML, just to give me a little bit of breathing space here. This title, well, I might just tab it a little bit so that it uh, follows a little bit of a, a tab view. Next, I'm going to create the uh, CSS file. Actually, I should save this one first. File, save, make sure I'm in the right place, minus in my libraries, Amazon. Uh, sites F. Rodriguez week 12, and I'll call this one index.html. That should uh, change the color view so that it's a little bit easier to read. Next, I'm going to create the uh, CSS file. I'll go to File, click on New, and I have a link also in the instructions where it says Attach. If you click on that, it'll take you to uh, the code that you need for external view. So I'll copy this already. It goes in the head. I'll copy. I press Control C, by the way. So uh, you could have done a right click and copy as well. I'll go to my index file because it goes in the title. Following the title, I'll paste this. I press Control V, edit paste. Will also work. There's your shortcut for paste Control V. Um, my file will be called styles. I'll rename that my styles. Everything else is fine. I'll save that and 
I'll go on to the next step. Well, it's already been attached, but I don't quite have the uh, CSS. Not just yet anyway. So I'm going to click on this simple CSS reset link. And I'm going to get some sample CSS. And I'm going to copy the whole thing and dump it onto my new file in my Notepad++. I copy, right-click, copy, right-click, paste. And to tell you the truth, I'm not really sure that I'm going to be using the reset on this page, but I'm going to keep it here nonetheless. In case it fails, I'll know that I need to delete this later. Actually, why don't I just delete it now instead of uh, confusing you for the next 10 seconds. So I, at least I have the character set UTF-8, which is uh, basic for every CSS. Go to File and save this within the Week 12 folder. And this is going to be called styles.css. I'll save that. And now these are existing and they're linked. Um, Okay, I'm going to close this, and I'm already on step number four. Actually, I just did four. So now we're going to insert the viewport meta tag. This is going to be very important. When you review the responsive web design, it'll tell you, you know, well, what is the viewport? Basically, the uh, viewport is uh, going to be what defines the visible area for a web page, whether you're using a monitor like I am here, or if you're in a in a mobile device. The viewport is this tag right here. It's a meta tag. Uh, select it all, right click, or just press Control C to copy. And this is, since it's a meta tag, it goes in the head. That'll follow the link. And I'll paste it. I press Control V, and now it's pasted. OK, now I close this. Uh, now we're going to be adding the semantic tags for a basic HTML page for the index.html. These are the same uh, basic HTML tags that we've been using throughout the semester. I have a link here that will take you to this uh, page that explains semantic elements again. And basically, we're doing a page that's very similar to this. There's a header. There's going to be a navigation. It's going to be vertical. Uh, we won't have any sections, but we will have some uh, content and an aside and definitely a footer. So one of the things that uh, you can get from this page is the name of all the uh, elements that we'll be using. They're basically the same as we have been doing all of this time. So inside the HTML page that I have open after creating it, uh, inside the body, is where obviously all the design is going to be taking place. So I'm going to start adding the stuff that we need. And we need a header. I'll open it and I'll close it. We'll have a uh, navigation element. So I'll open up a nav, close it. We will have a main class. Open and close. Inside of this main class, actually, there will be something else. There's going to be an aside, but I'll probably tag it outside. So I'll open up the aside and close it as well, aside. And finally, there will be a footer. We'll do all the tagging and all the styling following uh, these steps. OK, so now I have the basic semantic tags. Now we're going to go to step number, that was step number six, visit and review the grid view page. And step number seven, the grid view page. I'm not going to spend too much time telling you much about it, other than this is where the magic happens. We're going to be using a 12th column grid. They explain to you, you know, we're going to be splitting our page basically into 12 little parts. Uh, that way we can say, well, if we use 12 of those parts, we can put the whole header across the page. If we use three of these parts, the columns will span the uh, what we need for this menu. Uh, the aside will, will span the same uh, three columns. This means that we have three on one side, three on the other. We're going to use six for the main part. And again, we'll be using 12 columns across for the footer. 
uh, one thing that they tell you they recommend right away is to add the following code into the CSS and that is to put in the border box and uh, that's the box sizing property that's step number eight but I'll do it just now I'm going to copy that return to my CSS and I will paste it so that's the first part of the CSS I'm saving every every chance I get, pressing Control S whenever I have styles or index open. I'll return to the directions. We have already seen the uh, grid view page. Uh, we have added the box sizing. And then we're going to add the grid view column classes to the styles.css page. Well, hopefully by now you have read a little bit about this. And I know I gave you a very brief explanation, but basically, once we uh, have decided that our page is going to have the 12th column grid view, uh, we know that we are going to have to define the width of each one of these columns. Or not each one, each one's the same size. And, and size is measured by percentage. Uh, we just have to tell it, well, if it's just one, it's this size, but if it's two, it's another size. If it's three, it's definitely another size, etc. The grid view styling has already been coded for us, so I'll look for the CSS with all the column. You'll see that 12 columns will be 100%. That makes sense. It occupies the whole space. One column each is 8.33. If you were to start adding them, that's where they get these numbers. I right click and copy that, go back to my CSS, and uh, dump what I just copied. So now I have the column CSS, and uh, I'll continue with the steps. I'm going to close this again, insert the box size and property, which we've already done. Uh, the grid view column classes, we just did that, and we're going to start to add the selectors to the index.html page on step number 10. I'll go back to my notepad, and I want to see what's in my index.html. So I'll start to name, or at least uh, give uh, the uh, selectors some name classes. I'll start with header, and I'm going to arbitrarily just pick these something that I've used before or similar. I mean, I'll, I'll try to stick with what the uh, W3 page says. Um, so header will have a class of header. Unlike the W3, though, I'm using the actual uh, semantic tags. I think that they use divs all throughout. If you're using divs, that's fine. Just keep in mind that HTML5 gives us the opportunity to be a lot more clear with semantic tags. In navigation, I'm going to give this a class of uh, menu. That's what they call it. And uh, main, our main content. Actually, we'll take a class of, uh, they'll take it from the column classes. They're going to call it the uh, call six. So it's going to be basically uh, the main tag will be six columns wide. For that matter, the menu will be actually only three columns. So I'll be sure to add that here. Column three goes before menu. It's actually going to be loading up two CSS uh, properties from the same file. Uh, the aside will also be a three column. So side will be column three. And the footer will take a simple footer as well. Footer is class footer. OK. So for the most part, those are the selectors that we'll be using. Uh, next, in step 11, we're going to style these selectors in the styles.css file. Make sure that you're saving. File save, control S, styles.css. We put it all on the screen. We're going to uh, start to uh, name all the uh, 
elements that we just added. So we're going to be adding the class for header, for the menu, and for the footer at least. In the director, in the directions actually, I tell you here what steps you can take uh, for the CSS. You can add the role selector from the uh, grid view page. So in that grid view page that uh, we've been referencing back and forth, I'm going to look for the part where they talk about the row because basically um, every every element that goes across in this uh, page is a row. Uh, however, we've already defined the top row by it being a header and the bottom row by it being a footer. And here we're going to be having a div class of row that's going to separate the main body from everything else. That's going to include the uh, navigation and it's going to include the aside as well. So uh, let me copy this before I go on too far into this down the rabbit hole. I need to uh, copy this div class of row. I'll copy that and bring it onto the HTML page. So I know that Somewhere along the way, right after the header, I'm going to open up a row that's going to span everything all the way to the footer. Well, I don't need to paste the same thing again. I need to close the div. So let's close the div there. So what happened there now, on my line 15 anyway, right after the header, I added a new division with a class of row that I need to define. And that will include the navigation, the main and the aside. I'm going to select that text and just for my convenience I press tab on Notepad++ that will actually just give me a little bit of an invention. Careful depending on what uh, software you're using to uh, edit text. If you press tab it might delete it so make sure that you still have all your all your code. Now that we've added that row uh, we're going to add the floating property to all the column classes. That is also in the um, same page. After they give you the CSS for all the rows, let's see, that's this list right here. They tell you that all these columns should be floating to the left. So I'll copy this code, copy that, and come back to the CSS and I'll place this at least for now um, before the column stuff so class asterisk that means everything that starts with call hyphen that's all of these call hyphen 1 through 12 will be uh, assigned uh, floating to the left to be padded 50 pixels and although I copied that border we don't need borders, so I'm going to delete that part of the text that I copied. So next, uh, we're going to be wrapping the column classes at, in the desktop media query. That's in the media queries page. So all of these uh, column properties actually need to be defined for the desktop. And actually, I need to find the area where they're already encapsulated. You can either copy this thing all over again and replace it. I'm going to copy from add media only screen and minimum 768. So basically if anything happens at 768 these rules will be followed. I'll copy this and I'll replace the text that I already have over here. I'll paste that. So now I have the media query media only screen and the uh, 768 minimum width plus everything that we already had. Next we will use the styles and colors from the grid view page get the CSS from the more CSS file and let's see I have the uh, I have the grid view page open. 
and somewhere down here they will already have the example for the uh, all the uh, files or rather all the selectors that we've created so I'm going to copy the whole code HTML so that we will use the same font that they're using Lucida Sans if you want to use another one you can change it there I'm going to copy the menu CSS let's review it just a little bit the header that we'll have will have a background color of this uh, value which is purple uh, the color of the text will be white padding around it will be 15 pixels the menu will consist of an unordered list so here's the ul the li and even the pseudocode for that right click and copy go back to notepad and i'll put it before the column so i'll just paste that pressing control b to paste everything there is additional CSS that you can copy. The assignment has a uh, more CSS.txt file. I'm going to copy that. It's got the aside and the footer. It follows the same um, the same style as the code we just put in. So right after that, after the menu hover, I'm going to paste what I just copied. And now I have all the CSS for the uh, most of the CSS for the styling page you can close more TXT with more CSS rather so we've uh, completed step 11 now we're going to be adding some content because right now although I can publish this or even take a look at it if I run it I'm gonna open this in Firefox I'm using uh, Chrome for the for everything else but if I open up this in Firefox well I won't see much because it's a CSS file I need to open up the index file run launching Firefox and I've I think I only see here the header and the footer it's got no content but it's got color so at least I know they're connected and something's working so I'll move this out of the way come back here and get some of the uh, dummy text in this assignment, I provided you with uh, specific dummy text for this. This is basically the bacon text that we've used before. There's a dummy.txt file. I'll open it up. It's already coded. So I can control A to select all and copy that. I'm going to, uh, let's see, since I copied a whole bunch of stuff, I'm in the H index HTML. I can put that, I guess, inside of my main content, which is the uh, column six. Main column six, now paste. It's got a couple of uh, paragraphs. Uh, it's got a welcome inside an H1. And let's see, what else do I need? Well, I'm going to have an H1 for sure inside of the header. So I'll go back to the header area and uh, type in an H1 and uh, give it the name of the business. It's the Dallas Office Supply. Close the H1. In my uh, menu, I'm going to have uh, what we had in the uh, template assignment which is basically links to a home page and uh, products about etc so inside the nav at least for now I will type in just home about products and uh, contact well, let me code this since I'm already here I'm going to put in the, um, the code that's needed for an unordered list. So type in the UL followed by a list element. I can copy this and put it before each one of the pages. Close the uh, UL and also close the LI on all of the list items. I'm just going to copy that, paste it. And I'll even tab it in a little bit just for indentation. 
So now I have uh, dummy text for the uh, navigation. I have dummy text for the main stuff. Uh, we also have an aside. So I'll copy some of this as well. And by that I mean the H1 and maybe the first paragraph. Copy that. And uh, in my aside, just paste that. Welcome. I'll change the H1 to say um, something else like attention. I don't think that we need the initial paragraph there. And this might be way too much text, so I'm going to trim it. To trim the bacon to about that much, maybe even less. How about that much? Just a paragraph, just a sentence, really, or a couple. Pressing Control S to save. I'm just going to get rid of that space, and um, I think that that may complete that part. I mean, the dummy text to the side, to the main, and to the uh, H1, etc. Oh, the footer here. Well, put whatever footer you want. You can put in uh, a copyright notice or something like that. You can say, uh, put in a paragraph, a uh, fictitious page created for web design, Ooh. or something like that. If you want to put in the Dallas office supply, that's fine. Let an H, it's a D. Okay, so we're on to maybe see what this looks like now that it's got text. Let me try it out. I'm going to run and launch this in Firefox, see what pops up. Well, the CSS, again, it could be an index.html. Run, launch it in Firefox, and this is what it looks like right now. So obviously it needs a little bit of love because I have an open tag somewhere. That's why it's bleeding the blue all, all around. Close some old files here. And let me see what I did wrong. That would be in the HTML. And let me double check to see if I have something open. It looks like, looking at it in another screen, it looks like the main class let's see it looks for one that I don't close this paragraph here but that's just one thing let me confirm run this in Firefox again see if that helps any no not really I still see the same page but at least we get that closed. Something else, so that should be fixed just in case. Not that this matters much, but in the aside, that H1, really we should be using an H2. Should limit H1 to just stuff on top. And one thing also that needs to happen uh, that will become apparent later. At Maybe it's part of the same problem, but let me let me try it anyway. Um, column three in and of itself is just three columns. I think that what's happening here though is that it's expecting a little bit, or we're expecting too much of it. So uh, we had actually set out a class called the side. So I need to uh, make sure that there is an aside element here. So I'm going to open up a new division at div with a class of the side. Make sure to close that. And um, then close the division. Right after that, somewhere around here. So let me bring this in a little bit, I'll press tab. So we have the aside being opened up with a class of column three. And then we're going to open up a new division called uh, class aside. This seems a little bit counterintuitive. 
and it most definitely is. Let me see if I open it, whatever happens when I open it up in, inside of uh, Firefox. And actually, some things are better, but I still have this problem with the blue. We do have all parts that we need. However, the background here should be white. So it's somewhere, the problem lies somewhere between the footer and a side, I would think. So let me stop the video for just a couple of minutes and I'll come back uh, and see if I can't uh, debug it. Okay, so I did uh, some debugging and I uh, just looked at some missing code and I, I skipped a step somewhere along the way. Here we added the selector from the grid view page. We did that. We did add the selector, so we have a row where this exists. However, we did not give the row a style. So the row is assuming lots of things, and unfortunately, they're all the wrong things. So on the grid view page, there should be uh, some additional information for the CSS that we left out. And I do believe it's not this part of the CSS. It's the one that will allow us to actually tell it to go to the next line once it's uh, finished displaying what it's displaying. So here's the part that I'm missing. The CSS that says row after and content is blank. Clear both. So instead of it floating left or floating right, it's just going to stop the CSS and move on to the next thing. I'm going to copy this, go back to my notepad, and toward the top, right after the box sizing, I'm going to paste what I just copied. So it's this uh, row after the content, which I guess this either can go way up here or it could go after the row that we have here somewhere, but it should work there. So I'll just leave it there for now. Uh, it'll tell it to clear. I'm going to go to File and Save. Control S and uh, run it in Firefox. Once again, I am loading CSS. I should know better than that. I'll run the index instead. Run, launch in Firefox. And that's what I wanted to see. So this page is almost all done. One thing that is not done and I haven't been showing you is that, yeah, it's, this is a responsive page. This is a this is what happens with responsive pages. It reloads everything and uh, displays all the elements that we want. This is not perfect, or it will never really be perfect, but uh, we can uh, make this better by telling it to go all the way across uh, whenever it's being displayed in a narrower screen. And for one thing, we don't need this page to be as wide as we can make it. So we're going to also give it some limitations. If I go back to the directions, those should still be here at the mobile phone query from the grid view page. So in the grid view page, um, there should be uh, some code that, that will say, okay, well, if this is actually being displayed on the mobile phone, do something else. Let's see, do I go back here? Actually, it's on the uh, media queries page. I just saw it. For mobile phones, I'm going to copy this part, copy that, back in my CSS. I will add this toward the bottom before the columns. So then that says that every time that the column starts, make sure that the width is displayed at 100%. And then the final step is to add the code from bodycss.txt. This is uh, something that I got from another website. It's not necessarily on uh, CSS, uh, or rather the uh, W3 page. So I'll click on, not dummy, but body CSS. And this is going to basically make body a container that will allow it to go up to 800 pixels. We could change it to another size if you want. You could do 960 uh, and then have no margins and then tell it to not float. So I'll put this toward the top. 
I'll put it just before the first element. So I'll even change this to 960 here now, from 800 to 960. Do a save, do another save on the index, and run this in Firefox. And move this out of the way. Our page looks a little bit better. It's actually centered across this wide screen. If I were to make this uh, smaller, like a mobile device, however, now that we have the 100%, it looks a little bit more like an app. It will behave more like a web app. I'll take this out away again to this size. Um, for this assignment, if you want to change it from body Dallas office apply to something else, by all means do. I think that we know enough, you should know enough by now that uh, you can go into the HTML and uh, change the, um, the menu items, link these to real pages. Uh, this index HTML is basically your template. You can save this as the about.html, products.html, contact.html and then make sure that, well, actually, before you do that, link these uh, links to those pages. Um, the other thing that you would want to do is to maybe on the, um, since we did have this pencil and we do, you do have access to the pencil, uh, make it the background for the header in the CSS. I will probably be uploading uh, another video with uh, those instructions later on, but hopefully this will help you at least get started on the uh, on the responsive website design. If you have any questions, please email me. And and don't forget to upload this to your website. Um, I can go right now, I guess, and go into my Mozilla. And upload it. And that'll be the last thing I do on the video here. There's FileZilla. Let me go into my websites and I connect. Blank, blank, blank. I have week 12. Actually, this is an old folder. I'm going to delete that. And make sure that I have my files saved on this side. I guess I can do one final check. Make sure to save, file saved, control S, and control S on styles and index. I'll go back one and upload week 12 to my site. And once that's done, I'm going to uh, See if I can go to my Firefox, type in my address, F Rodriguez, uh, RIDT, etc. at week 12. And here's my page. Kind of like what I expected. It's got the CSS and it works just like it does locally. Like I said, if you want to add the photo, etc., you can do that. I'll, I'll try to get you a video soon enough. In the meantime, uh, be sure to turn in the URL for your site. And uh, like I said, call me if you have any questions.